she was willing to drop the bigamy charges if he would just abandon Linda and come back to their marriage. But Samuel said no, and he chose to go to prison and face the lawsuit because he was so in love with Linda. So the court ended up <laughs> charging him with bigamy, and he went to prison for two years. And during this time, he changed his mind, and he decided that he didn't want to be with Linda anymore. And then he, him and Viva were gonna rekindle the relationship, and they would be together once he got out of prison. And to that, he didn't decide that, you know, a week before, so he could avoid prison. So in prison, he wouldn't even let Linda visit him because he didn't want to be like swayed back into her arms. So all of the attention went back to Viva. They were going to get married again as soon as he was released. They were going to move in with her parents, get back on their feet, rekindle the relationship, the whole thing. But love sick Linda over here. She'd been fantasizing the whole time about being with Sam. She wanted to go into the medical business with him, so she had all these grand plans that she was going to do with him, and she was not going to let Viva win, like, her own man back. Linda wasn't going to let that happen. So even though Sam had continually denied Linda to come and visit him, she wrote him over and over and over until... <laughs> said that the truth 
devoid of nutrients. It was just the liquid from boiling. 
she wasn't mentally there at first. Dora begged her old nanny to get her out of there. And then the next day, she's like, no, what are you talking about? I don't want to leave. I love it here. So she was, she was delirious. She didn't really know what was going on. And Margaret also said that when she got to the property and was alone with Dora, two other patients came up to her and whispered that they were prisoners in Linda's facility and they begged Margaret to get them out. And by this point, Wilderness Heights had also been nicknamed Starvation Heights by the people in the area because patients would walk off the property and go into town looking for food and assistance. Like, yeah. <laughs> our human drive to eat. Of course they did. So the, the people nicknamed it Starvation Heights, but they didn't do anything to get it shut down or anything like that. Margaret went to discuss things with Linda. Like, I'm taking Dora with me. I don't know what you're doing to her, but she's leaving. And she quickly noticed that Linda was wearing some of Claire's very expensive jewelry and clothing. Like this woman, she wasn't even trying to hide it. She just helped herself to her dead patient's things. How, how messed up is that? And Margaret asked Linda about Claire's belongings and getting all of her things out and like shipped back to her family. But Linda said, no, no, no. Claire has left me her expensive jewelry, her expensive furniture household goods, everything she brought to the facility, basically. She's left that to me. It's all mine now. And Linda told her that she was now in charge of Dora's assets and medical care as well. Because Dora had basically signed her life over to Linda. And Margaret knew what was going on. Like, it was, it was so obvious. And she told Linda, um, I'm leaving with Dora and we're leaving right now. And Linda and Samuel, who had come into the room at this point, said, no, you're not. We have legal guardianship of her. She's not in a good mental state right now. And she'll be spending the rest of her life with us. How menacing is that? That is... Like, that's a horror movie, right? That, it, that's a horror movie right there. So Margaret, she probably felt very scared, and she wanted to defuse the situation, so she left. But she didn't give up or anything like that. She immediately contacted Dora and Claire's wealthy uncle, who was living in Portland. And thank God, because there is no way that Dora had, like, any time left. Dora's uncle, he arrived at the sanitarium with Margaret, but 
was charged with manslaughter in the death of Claire Williamson. She deserved a lot more than that, but it is what it is, and she was sentenced to the state prison at Walla Walla for two to twenty years of hard labor. Because justice is justice, she would only serve two years in prison, and when she got out, the Washington State Board revoked her medical license. Sam had stuck by her side this whole time, and then the two moved to New Zealand. Here, Linda continued practicing medicine, referring to herself as a doctor, and continued practicing this ridiculous treatment on people. Thank God police found out that she was practicing medicine without a license, and they put a stop to it really quickly in New Zealand. But again, she didn't get in any trouble. She just got a small fine. <laughs> and again, I'm laughing because of how ridiculous it is. In 1920, the couple moved back to Olala. Olala. <laughs> Um, they really didn't understand the meaning of staying under the radar because Linda built another sanitarium to continue treating patients in the exact same way. She didn't have a license though. How did she get away with it this time? She just changed the name. That's all she did. She couldn't legally call it a medical center without a license. So, can you guess what? She named it. She named it the School of Health. How pretentious. She was completely allowed to do this. Voluntary, curious patients, they flocked to the new School of Health and underwent fasting treatments. Her new school 